Hey guys, Bo Oliver here. Before we get into today's podcast, I, I just wanted to plug a couple of things that we forgot to plug while recording. We do that a lot because we got so invested in today's show because of what we were talking about. I'm, I'm sure you know what's going to be the main topic. But before we get into that, like I mentioned, I want to plug some things. So we still have the superhero, greatest superhero movies of all time, the Multiverse of March Madness tournament still happening on Teddy's Twitter. So if you go to Teddy's Twitter page, at Teddy Nerdsube, you can vote in those polls. Uh, we're well underway in the second round. I think we're already up to the second round for the Wolverine region. Uh, we have those matchups going on today. And once again, you can win uh, our giveaways. We're doing select giveaways for each region until the tournament is over. So all you have to do in order to enter the giveaway is follow all of us on Twitter. So that's at Teddy Nerd Soup, at Bo Soup, at Nerd Soup, at Nerd Soup Monkey, and retweet the polls that Teddy has been so diligently tweeting over the past couple of weeks, even though he's missed some deadlines here and there we've managed to get all those matchups out and it's in the second round so it's a bit more competitive we have classic movies going up against other classics so it's it, the voting has been you know pretty lopsided for the first few rounds but now it's starting to get tighter and like i said you can you know enter our giveaways and be one of our select winners we actually have two more winners to announce on today's podcast the first winner is hayden acebido so shout out to hayden thank you for retweeting the polls and we will be messaging you today about your prize and the second winner is zayad at zayad of the year once again zayad thank you for retweeting the polls uh the participation the engagement has been pretty awesome and these are you know it's just a fun little thing we wanted to do for the month of march uh, also on Wednesday, so that would be tomorrow, we are releasing our Attack on Titan review. We're going back and we're reviewing the four episodes that have aired since our last review, gearing up for the finale. Uh, you know, a lot has happened, a lot of chaos, obviously, and we're going to talk about that. So that's going to be me and Aaron, and we're going to release that as a podcast tomorrow. Uh, and we'll also be doing a, an Attack on Titan themed giveaway on tomorrow's podcast. So make sure you're listening to that review to figure out how you can enter that. All right, that is uh, enough of me plugging stuff. We're going to go right into the opening. We didn't even include the opening music because we just got right into chopping it up about Sunday's Oscars. Uh, we had a lot to talk about. It was an interesting conversation. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And yeah, just throw it to Aaron. I can't believe you fell asleep. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, well... I turned it off. I just went to sleep. <laughs> was it bad to watch? I didn't watch any of it. I just watched the... Uh, well, I just get tired around 9.30. I can't stay up. Yeah. I'm literally an old man. But that was... The, what What an incredible night scrolling Twitter at 3 a.m. <laughs> that was so funny. Were you like, what the fuck? Like, what was your, like, your first... At first, you know, when I first saw the video, it looked like a punch. I know. So my first impression was, oh my God, he just punched Chris Rock at the Oscars. You I know? thought he missed at first. I, I thought it was like a fit. You know, like how you can like hit your chest and make the sound like the wrestlers do. I thought it was like yeah. a bit like that. And once they like they cut the audio feed, I'm like, yo, that was real. I know, but you saw it live, right? Yeah, you didn't. No, but I. But you Pat were McAfee up. dropped the uh, yeah right. right I was right. on the mic and Joe's like, Chris uh, Will Smith just punched Chris Rock, and I, I ignored it. And then he said it again. I'm like, w w what do you mean? <laughs> He's like, Will Smith yeah, just punched Chris Rock at the Oscars. <laughs> Oscars. I'm like, what? And then I went on Twitter and it was all over Twitter. Besides that, was the Oscars like cool to watch? Or was it still sucky? It's like, you know, besides the, besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? <laughs> it's kind of a... Uh... Complete and utter shit. <laughs> yeah. how was was, uh, was uh, oh, Amy Ken Poehler fun? Jackie Kennedy, how was the rest of the parade? <laughs> well, you know, it's hard, hard to judge the rest of it at <laughs> that moment. But if we're being objective, yeah, not up to standards. It's harder, getting harder and harder for me to stay awake these days. It's, that's just my sleep schedule. But, um, you know, up until that point... One of the worst productions I think the Oscars had, has ever put on. Oh, yeah. Um, and you you just knew where the show was going from the very beginning. It felt like they were embarrassed to be doing it. <laughs> you know? It was just a weird, like... Like, oh, you guys don't want to watch the Oscars here? anymore? <laughs> we, we hate the Oscars, too. We don't like movies. We hate movies, too. Do you think we're cool? Do you think we're cool? But the thing... <laughs> you're putting on a show for movie lovers. Before, you know, cater to the baked in audience, like I the know. Republican Party, cater to your base, you know? But like <laughs> they're good at that. Like I gotta bring politics into it. Before the that incident, like, it was a weird fucking show. Because they cut the categories, but then they played a bridge version of the categories in a way that like you should have just left the fucking categories in. It made no sense whatsoever. 
They were playing. Re- I know. Yeah. Re- the- it was a longer show than last yeah. year, and they did that bullshit. <laughs> it ended up being and a they longer cut fucking show, and yeah. it was still longer. Then there was the fact that they played. We don't talk about Bruno, which wasn't even nominated, taking up some more time, taken away from the categories. And the fan vote was fucking absurd. Like, I forgot about that. Like, I knew it was a thing, but I didn't think it was going to have that type of presentation. And to see <laughs> them get trolled like that was just odd. Just watching the Oscars and the number one fan reaction moment is the Flash entering the Speed Force. <laughs> it was just so absurd and hilarious that, like, it just it just felt like a weird show. Yeah, I guess we'll just cancel the cold opening for today and just just get right into it. We got to do the hello, everybody. Welcome back. To yeah, the podcast, everybody, welcome back. Uh, Instagram, Hollywood stories. We're gonna talk about we're some other stuff. Turning up the Oscars, man. <laughs> Fucking ha- and show a little life into this. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some other stories. Obviously, U.S. box office, uh, some Marvel news, and also the Batman. But yeah, we're, we're starting off with the Oscars here. So of course, listen to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Follow us on social media at Nerd Soup, Bo Soup, Nerd Soup, Muggy, Teddy, Nerd Soup. Um. I know. I, I, people had so many things to nitpick about this ceremony that what the big event, obviously, or the big uh, incident, Will Smith striking Chris Rock, which was just, like I said, I, I fell asleep, so I had no idea what happened, and I woke up to some of the best Twitter scrolling that I've ever done <laughs> in my life. But just like um, everything great on Twitter, it turned and oh, turned no, it fucking became fast. For, I, insufferable. I, I'll never understand why every person with a platform feels the need to weigh in yeah. on every single thing that happens nobody needs your moral judgment in these moments random person who owns a magazine or a random person who stars in a reality show it's everyone Judd has to chime in yeah, right <laughs> well those reactions too from a lot of these individuals in hollywood who are calling it the most embarrassing oscar moment ever the worst oscar moment ever come on give me a break it, it, it's so just reacting in the moment, trying to get out on top, trying to have this moral high ground that you don't need to do. You don't need to interject yourself in every situation. But yeah, Apatow's tweet was so ridiculous. He and could have killed been s- him. He could have <laughs> killed him. Just tweet laugh my ass off and keep it moving. The funniest tweet <laughs> wasn't even a funny tweet. It was one of those moral high ground ones when it was like, if that was, imagine that was Betty White. <laughs> right, no, the other people making it about themselves. Yes. I've, you know, I, I've seen comedians say, yeah, I've been heckled on stage and people have thrown things at, at me. So, you know, comedians are under fire or, you know, my own trauma, the way I've dealt, I have to deal with violence throughout my life. I, it's been mind blowing, but I shouldn't be surprised because that's what the internet has become where mm-hmm. everyone has to just chime in like, has yo, to give their two cents when it's totally not necessary like obviously it was a, a complete overreaction and it shouldn't have happened but like why can't we as a society on the internet take what it was and just be like this is the most absurdly hilarious craziest thing ever and keep it at that yeah. Will Smith went up on stage during the Oscars and slapped his shit at a Chris Rock that's fucking bonkers and why can't we just embrace how bonkers it was and have our jokes instead of going off on these fucking tangents about, oh, if that was, if he was a celebrity, he would be in jail tonight. Or, uh, like you said, um, it is kind of crazy. He assaulted him and <laughs> nothing. <laughs> he got a standing ovation for it. It's funny. It's, it's hilarious. So absurd. I know. No, why it can't is, we just leave it at that? The best way to put it is that it, it's absurd. It's truly yeah. absurd. It's, it's one of those timelines that, you know, we could have been living in a crazier timeline if Chris Rock didn't handle it the way he he did. I was because like, I got looked, more props for Chris Chris Rock than for than Will Smith. At it looked 100%. like he was going into the holster there for a second when he said I could, and then he yeah. cut himself off, and then he kind of just moved on. But what happened? Awarded if he Quest Love with Best Documentary for Summer of Love. Uh, not really an upset, but I wanted Flea to win, yeah. so it kind of stepped on that moment as well. I didn't care about anything else. No, no, you can't. I mean, it's always going to be known as the Oscars where Will Smith slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. <laughs> I love just it. Though. Walked up on him. I love that. And it's hilarious. Just West Phillyed him right in front of the entire I was fucking world. In shock. Like I, the whole like it does suck because it did hijack the rest of the show. But like we talk about the Oscars needing some. I think I've watched it thirty times. I just can't. <laughs> it's it's like the video of the girl when she hit that other girl with the shovel. Where I just can't get over <laughs> how that's <laughs> it's so violent. Uh, but that was I feel like. In but Will's it's also head. it is hilarious because it's Chris Rock. When they put the Everybody Hates Chris theme song on it, he seems like like if somebody had to get punched at the Oscars, Chris Rock is not the, uh, such a surprising you no. know guy who gets punched. It was almost like Will was saying, 
like me and you were talking earlier. I was like, stop playing with my name. And it was like him telling the world to stay out of my life. <laughs> yeah, if you want to two cents in my life. Like approach it from the angle of what made Will Smith act that way, because obviously he's never done that before. Uh, you know, you could say that a lot of the pressures he of said being it Will Smith, especially over the last four or five years where the relationship between he and Jada Pickett Smith has become a punchline to a lot yeah. of people. And hey, sometimes, you know, taking that, you know, we sometimes think that celebrities are maybe, you know, that they kind of live above all the discourse on the internet, that they don't know what people are actually saying about them. But a lot of these celebrity uh, celebrities are tuned in. They're tapped into what people are saying. They know about the jokes. They're um, also very I, I'm not public, excusing though. it, but I, I think that there hasn't been, I, I don't know, everyone's now taking sides. So it's, of course, that's really what it becomes as well. Where no, it's like, you're on Chris you. Rock's side, you're on Will Smith's side. But I think a lot of people aren't focusing on the fact that Will Smith didn't look all right. He looked nah. shaken up in a way that you've never seen him like that before. And you have to wonder, you know, you hope that, that he is okay. And right, obviously Chris Rock yeah. as well. Well, you saw the video after. He was, <laughs> I think he was all right. <laughs> Yeah, and I think from you know after. Chris Rock, it's obviously uh, you know it's very embarrassing, and oh, like yeah. like Aaron said, it never should have happened. But he uh, made himself look better not reacting to it though. Like he puts himself in a better light too though by not Chris Rock not reacting to what Will Smith did. Well, that room, I mean, for them to fall deadly silent and then ten minutes later <laughs> cheer him on—that's the absurdity. Yeah, yeah no, it's they, fucking no, fantastic. They, uh, the rest of Hollywood in that room had no idea what to do. <laughs> No idea. They all just absolutely froze. Um, like Lupina Nyong'o's face. Yeah. You know, she, her face told it all. Where at first it was it was almost funny to her, but then she put it together. Oh, he's, he's this being is, yeah, serious. This is not a joke. Uh, <laughs> that second keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. That like, was heavy. Gave me chills. Yeah. Like, that was yeah, no. He, <laughs> the second he, one. He snapped. Uh, uh, <laughs> but Coda, huh? Coda yeah. winning best picture. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, it just took everything else out of, like, I... I like didn't even get upset that Chris and Sue didn't win. I didn't have time to think about anything else because I was just still in shock. And back when Twitter was actually having fun with this, which we should still be doing, I was just on Twitter just seeing everyone's reaction, and it was just <laughs> oh, bro. The Kevin when they stitched the Kevin Hart one, you gonna slap me, bitch? I'm <laughs> <laughs> <All right! laughs> <laughs> I saw them. They had the picture of the Miami Heat in the hallway waiting for the other team, and it was like Adam Sandler, uh, Kevin James, <laughs> David Spade waiting for Will Smith. Um, uh, no, the, uh, the memes were. I mean, it's you see the two sides of Twitter. You see yeah, the amazing, yeah. incredible side of why everybody becomes addicted to it, and then the awful side where it becomes just take central. Everyone has to have a take. You have to plant your flag on, on which so side you're on. It's so fucking annoying. I um, think it was fake. Uh, the Oscars going to do some, their reaction is going to be There's so no way that fucking. Was fake. <laughs> and I was making you, say something. But <laughs> you always get that crowd, but I they know. haven't been. I thought for a little bit, I'm like, this had, is this a bit like, but then once like, obviously they cut and then you heard the unedited version, you're like, oh no, this was real. So, but wait, so I, you I didn't hear from, that version at first? No, they cut it. Him saying, you no, might, you, the they U.S. Cut it? Uh, broadcast did cut it. Because oh. they were probably they probably caught it mm -hmm. way quicker than... Because yeah. I think it was Australia and Japan that yeah. both aired it on they aired, and they, The J Japanese telecast, they just they, they translated it. Yeah, yeah. They, kept, they kept translating <laughs> it. That's, that, that, that's the one I saw with the, with the cursing in it. <laughs> they were like, hey, we got to do it. We have a job to do here. Translator's just, job is... Bro, he was laughing at the joke, though. That's what I don't, that's what I don't get why where this came from. He was laughing at the joke, and then he saw Jada's face and then and that was it it was like no, I think uh, I've seen know, that before where you, you kind of chuckle even though awkward? you are mad it was awkwardly laughing maybe yeah um, and like yeah, I said I think the that joke. Like, what is that G -G 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 oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go too far in trying to dissect what was going through his mind but I, I do think that it was way more about all the shit that he's been getting from so many people over the years because of the perception of their relationship you know, the crying Will Smith meme became, you know, that became a viral thing. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's what it is, but that was the response from the internet. And they have had to deal with that for a few years now. And I'm just not surprised that it boiled. I, I guess I am surprised, but once you think about it a bit more, you know, people snap sometimes. The pressure of being a celebrity, they live one life that we see, and then there's another side to them that they have to kind of keep bundled up. And sometimes that can boil over. I want to show sympathy to, to him though, but they're very open with their relationship. 
But they had that like pocket that like video that vlog. That's with like them. part of like why people make fun of them. Is like yeah, no, because they're very open them. and like they broadcast everything that's going through their lives, and you gotta expect some blowback from them from the media. Leo's getting ready for the and next everyone. girlfriend joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, well, that's <laughs> another point I want to make is that the hosts weren't good. It was once again a great endorsement for why there shouldn't be a host for the Oscars. I thought they were fine. I, th- I thought the Kristen Kirsten Dunst uh, bit was st- like that was stupid. That could have been cut. But everything else was funny jokes. Uh, I liked when she was Spider Man. The Don't Look Up was pretty funny. Don't Look Up was pretty funny. Don't look up the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> she had an Aaron Sorkin. It's nerve wracking, man. You're hosting the Oxford. She said it. It's, you know, being always in the funny. Room. I don't know. It wasn't was like the, the Sykes funny. I didn't like the bit when she's at the museum. All of those bits are yeah. so. But it was the spirit of the show that pissed me off. All the things that they weren't showing, so that they can show these oh. half baked com- comedic bits. If it was a normal year where we were getting all the categories, fine. That's tradition with the Oscars. But the nonsense was unbearable because of what they were cutting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm not going to give them the benefit of it's hard to host the Oscars because the whole even their some of their humor and I don't want to be this this type of person but I guess I have to be it felt dismissive of what they were there to do like they didn't want to be there to honor movies mm-hmm. everybody watches television blah 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 the power of the dog took me three times to get through it they could have been innocent jokes and they actually do like these movies but it stretched throughout the whole ceremony yeah. even you know doing these stupid fucking fan vote things the Snyder <laughs> the Snyder <laughs> cut is being honored at the Oscar for a t- ever the army of that the that was dead. a top five cinematic moment ever and it goes to the fucking Justice League a yeah. flash tapping into the speed force. <laughs> I remember where I, I was. I thought it was a disaster when I, when I of a presentation. That. A disaster. You don't, you don't remember your reaction to flash entering the speed force? It was a great moment, but top five? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Um, top yeah. one? It, it really is never. I think like the funniest bit I can remember from the Oscars was when Jimmy Kimmel, when they were doing like the all the serious, like why they love movies and they're sitting in a theater. It's like, oh, I remember this scene, this movie. And he's like, and then cut to Jimmy Kimmel. And he's like, it's, it's, it's Matt Damon. We bought a zoo, and it's like, I like how he just he said that he was going to buy the zoo, and he actually bought the zoo. And I thought that was actually a really funny bit, especially his history with Matt Damon. But other than that, like none of those bits ever land for me. So that's just a miss. That's Dude, the way miss. they cut off Hamaguchi. Dude, that was, was so, so disrespectful. Dis- I was furious. Ten, he didn't get ten. Se- 10 seconds at the most. <laughs> Dude, this guy goes, Drive My Car, one of the most acclaimed movies ever. He's the first, I'm pretty sure he's the first Japanese filmmaker to win for Best International he Feature. He doesn't even get the Oscar. Since Japan a- does. Akira Kurosawa. So it's Japan's first winner since Kurosawa, one of the greatest directors of all time. They cut him off in like 30 seconds, dude. Oof. Completely cut him off. 30 seconds. His is movie generous. has been nominated wow. for how many Oscars was he nominated for? Screenplay, Screen- Screen- Best Picture. Yeah. What was the what was the award he won for? International. Best International. Damn. Uh, and he's I mean, asking them, like, hey, let me, let me fucking speech. talk. <laughs> uh, between that, uh, the In Memoriam, I mean, I guess that's just become a thing where it's going to be a more upbeat celebration. However, was it like the flash thing? Like the fucking. I, I heard at that at the end they were like go on the website to see the rest. <laughs> I honestly I did not pay attention to anymore. I was too busy think, reeling from the Will Smith thing. Uh, the tribute to the Godfather. We're gonna have Coppola. They had up the there. weirdest <laughs> tributes. <laughs> the tribute to the Godfather was terrible. It was like the 28th anniversary. Like 28. They well, just put, picked the Pulp Fiction one. You could pick one? any yeah, movie. That. Ever and be like, it's the 17th anniversary of this White film. White man can't jump. Yeah, dude, like <laughs> they did that. But yeah, for like the 28th anniversary, it was no, so but it was random. That, at least that was like a round number, like 30th or whatever. Oh, it was 30th, okay. But like then they went to Pulp Fiction. It's like the 27th anniversary of Pulp. Like, what are you like? What I'm you just happen to... to have these people available? So like, I guess we'll yeah. just do like something cool. When I saw the 28th, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like, why would they pick 28th? Like, did it win? It so it won 28 years ago. Like, why would they pick? But you 28th? could do that for anything. I know, but I'm like, but why the are they picking 28? There is we're going to honor movies that people still like that people still have in their minds to draw in viewers and they couldn't even do that right where they picked these random ass movies because like you said they, they were probably just there or the godfather the godfather's been trending on twitter all the time over the past month because this is the 50th anniversary month and you just bring up coppola pacino and De Niro, you know and the montage uh, was terrible and they don't even get the chance to speak al pacino and robert De Niro. Yo, these guys are fucking legends of cinema. That's what pissed me off so much about these Oscars. The Bond that it sucks. felt like it, it yeah, the Bond tribute 
the montage was okay, but why the fuck is Tony Hawk up there? What relation does Tony Hawk have with James Bond? Well, many have called him the pro, uh, the James Bond of pro skating. <laughs> but you're you can't call in Daniel Craig. You can't call in Timothy Dalton. You can't get Pierce Brosnan. You can't get Judy Dench on the stage. Do an actual tribute. Celebrate these artists. Some of these people are up there in age. How long? How much longer do we have Al Pacino and Robert De Niro? I want them to live forever. <laughs> Pacino looks old. But you know these these are aging stars. Robert Duvall so is like eighty nine, and he wasn't there. He's why wasn't he there? He's alive. So for me, the whole ceremony as a whole was. I'm getting so worked up over it. it. Was a disaster. I thought it was the worst Oscars I've seen. You think the Oscars? And it was a good slate of movies. That's the worst part. You think the Oscars, like the Oscar trophy itself, is still like holding weight? No, it's a uh, hell of an achievement. That's another thing where Will Smith like finally gets his Oscar, and his moment will forever be foreshadowed by that. Like he ruined his own moment. Did you hear that the Oscars wants to strip him from the That's, award? Then strip all of Weinstein, strip yeah, uh, no. Roman Polanski, that was strip, a big thing. strip Woody Allen's. Like, yeah, the, it's easy to strip Will Smith's Oscar. Yeah, but Raven go back and you know, strip the guys that you've been protecting for all these decades. <laughs> yeah. If we're going to open that Pandora's box, <laughs> but yeah. when you slap that's the other thing, the, you know, the hysterical <laughs> fucking outrage from some of these celebrities, like they've never seen something worse than what Will Smith did. Dude, at the it was Oscars. A, like obviously it's, it's not more the, shocking not than anything, time and but, place, but like it was a fucking slap in the face. People are acting like he committed a fucking heinous crime in front of millions of people. It was a slap. Inappropriate. Shouldn't have done it. And it was a big mistake, and I'm sure he feels that way. But let's have some perspective, people. Relax. Let's just think... Let's just laugh at it, because... It, there will. are also a lot of people out there that are used to people getting slapped when they fuck around and find out. Right. So there's, right. pe- there's <laughs> Dude, millions of people out there that are on Will Smith's side. I'm not saying that yeah. it's right or wrong or what side am I on, but, you know, some people aren't as sensitive to what happened as, as other people are. I swear to God, I, this Saturday I got, like, hit in the face by somebody because, you know, there was the St. Paddy's Parade by us, which, yeah. by the way, two weeks late. There was, like, a little, like, a, a drunk asshole outside was, mumble, like, stumbling around being a drunk dickhead, and, like, I was, like, outside, and, like, he, like, kind of was, like, tangling with my brother my brother was like what the fuck is going on so I go over to check it out and he's like what are you looking at and like threw like a punch I was like what? he didn't like hit clock me or hit me hard but like yeah. it was like a slap punch and I was like what? he's tube steak <laughs> <laughs> do I look like I got hit <laughs> black eye did not connect <laughs> and like I actually like bro no that, that fucking video of the kid that lost the fight you, you yeah. ever see that video <laughs> yeah yeah the three of them in the car and he's like he's like going like this and like looking in the mirror and it's just quiet in the car <laughs> like even that moment like I took like a step back and I was like like, but, but then I realized the situation is drunk guy and I just let him walk and continue yeah, and do his thing exactly. I wasn't gonna do anything about it but like what are you gonna do fuck up an, an old drunk person yeah like <laughs> it just wasn't like exactly so it wasn't like the time and place like I was like the kind of my cool and kind of just walked away from the whole situation but like yeah I don't want this guy arrested or I'm not screaming assault I'm like oh yeah this guy just, just sometimes it happens has, has either of them spoke on this yet does Chris uh, Rock come out and say anything, or Will Smith? Nah, not I really, seen but like... I don't know if I missed it. Like, the shit, you know, it had, like, I guess... Tempers <laughs> I know, the best uh, people, and... Diddy uh, came out and said that yeah. they squashed any beef. So if Diddy said it, yeah, you know that's, it's true. That's pretty right <laughs> he on, He made then. a video, it was so funny, he's like... It's like, yeah, all love, we're moving forward, but damn, Chris Rock got a chin on him. <laughs> <laughs> he did you, that, bro, man. Could you imagine if he went down? That's what I'm saying. He went like fucking. He did eat it. He did. He yeah, went no, stanky leg and just fucking got dropped. But imagine he didn't and he went down. Bro, oh my God. Then, this, then the screen would just cut. Could you imagine that? I really couldn't. But dude, could you imagine if he just unleashed jokes and he was just like, oh, fuck it, let's turn going. this into. Uh, he could have, man. Let's, I'm ruin, you. let's ruin the night. Chris Rock because Chris Rock could have ruined the night. Well, and that's like the whole thing, too. Where, like everyone's like, kept oh, this, this is ruining comedy. Like it's an isolated incident. And, yeah, it happened on a big stage between two prominent people, but like this isn't going to take away from comedy. But I do see a situation where the Oscars overreacts, like, all right, you can't make fun of people. Also, it's, yeah. it's you know, if I guess it had Chris <laughs> Rock. No more roasting. You know, sometimes you do need to be sensitive with certain types of jokes. Um, so, you know, like I said, you can't really condone Will Smith's actions, but if you're going to poke the bear, so to speak, sometimes you have to be prepared for the repercussions, you know, bark up that tree, that tree will fall on you. Um, but it's a, I think it's a situation that 
requires more nuanced conversation than we're, than what we're getting on the internet, which is right. so surprising, right? You know, no. the internet has to make <laughs> binary world, right? Yeah, I just don't know why people can't leave it. Like, yeah, I mean, it was a you know a little bit of a, a tough joke from Chris Rock, and maybe he shouldn't have said that. Maybe Will Smith shouldn't have reacted that way. But boy, am I happy they did because it was <laughs> fucking entertaining. No, but now we're getting all the fucking think pieces. Yeah, it's stupid. Will the real Will Smith please stand up? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a, my piece on Will Smith, Chris Rock, the Oscars. <laughs> and even uh, Amy Schumer's joke was the Chris and Dunst bit was so, yeah. Dis- no, yeah, so disrespectful but to that, a nominee. That was a planned bit, I feel like. So maybe it didn't look right and the optics weren't cool, but I feel like that was like a planned bit. Oh, no, it was definitely a planned bit. I just think it was no, it wasn't, a little no, bit not embarrassing. Not all planned bits are good bits. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, like, are the how, bits, how the awards? Wait, <laughs> are the, are the, the bits that, like, when, when, uh, when she took the seat from... Yeah, that's what his we're wife. Talking about. Talking about? Yeah. Wait, he's married to Kirsten Dunst? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Hugh and Nash. Same reactions to <laughs> so Jesse that a, Clements wait, being so married that to Kirsten Dunst. That was a bit. That's a weird thing to do. <sighs> right, but it, 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 it kind of that was the energy of the show, was just disrespecting these movies, disrespecting these actors, disrespecting all the workers that have worked on these films. It started weeks ago. When they announced this ridiculous plan where everyone and all the predictions ended up being right. Mm-hmm. And you knew it five minutes into the show what the show was going to be. I think I only got Please th- like us, please yeah. like us, please like us. We hate movies, we hate movies. Yeah. And then like- end, uh, it ended up being a fucking disaster. Will Smith basically saved it. Right, Thank why, God, because the story would have been the worst <laughs> Oscars ever. Such a snooze fest. That's why I think it was planned. <laughs> staged. No, it wasn't planned. It I was think just like destiny. My, the ballot. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. the things just align. <laughs> the ballot I filled out. I think I went like I only got like three wrong, and that's because it was just very predictable. Very predictable. I'm not saying like I oh I'm, that like wasn't even like a cocky thing. It was just more like yeah, just pick all the favorites and all the favorites won. <laughs> but dude, the presentation they did when Chris Rock hosted the Oscars was why don't they just do that every year? It was so respectful of the categories and the nominees. It ran for a shorter time than this one ran. So if your whole plan, it's like baseball trying to fucking shorten the games and then the games still end up being four or five hours. <laughs> so you're trying to bring in a new audience that you're just pissing off the audience you already have. Get Ricky back. Be happy with, well, that's Golden Globes. Let's move on to the next topic. Any any well, last like anything, thoughts? But anything about the awards, Coda winning Best Picture? That was a little bit of a surprise, but I think that was kind of game, gaining momentum. And, you know, like I like. Like we talked about like that was a fine film. I liked it a little, quite a bit, but I don't think it's the best picture. Well, your ranking of Licorice Pizza on your rankings of you, best picture like, nominees was, was that could favorite. have been the big story of this podcast. Will Smith <laughs> saved you because uh, I was ready to chew you out, but I've already exhausted enough energy on this topic. <laughs> but yeah, Coda. I mean, you know, people have well, your been, defense. I'm like, I didn't really like. You know, I thought it was good, but I didn't really like it. You're like, oh, you never been so happy you wanted to run. I'm like, no. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guess you got to know your audience. <laughs> well, like, apparently Paul Thomas Anderson was. But uh, yeah, Coda winning, you know, I saw the tweet, in a year with Power of the Dog and West Side Story and Dune, this glorified Disney Channel movie had to win. It feels wrong. But I liked Coda. I don't have a big problem with it, so I, I could care less about other people's problems with it. Jane Campion winning for The Power of the Dog. That was also nice to see. You know, she took such a gap between making movies and then she just came out with a fucking banger. Dune, obviously, came away with the most. Uh, That was predictable as well. Like, we talked about Denis not getting nominated and everything. And, like, but, like, when you watch the Oscars and you keep seeing it win and win and win every single technical piece and you're like, hmm, I wonder who, like, oversaw all this and, like, put this all together into a cohesive vision. (laughs) Like, that guy had to have been... Yeah, there's one guy that they all keep thanking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're like, thank you for putting this vision together. Thank you for directing us. Because on the outside looking in, when he didn't get nominated, like, all right, well, this, you know, maybe I can see why they went this way and this way and this way, but to sweep all the uh, technical aspects, and you're just like, well, so what does the Academy actually think directors do? Because <laughs> if, they, if they didn't win any of those aspects, then maybe you could be like, okay, but, like, you're kind of contradicting yourself. And the Oscars always do that, especially when you get the people who come out and say that they've never seen half the movies, and they vote for them. But I digress. The Academy that vote say that they haven't seen half the movies and they still vote for the movies? Yeah, someone came out and was like, uh, they're talking about like they had the anonymous 
uh, voters, and they're like, oh, I didn't see this one. That's a shame. Didn't, didn't finish this one. That's a shame. That's fucked up. Turn this one off 20 minutes in. How was that allowed? <laughs> That's like me talking about something. I have no idea what I'm talking about. You do it every okay, You guys let me do it. Yeah. We uh, enable you. You see Denis News family? No. Fucking unit. Big family? Yeah, dude. That's a starting five. And I think he's got a six man. Big kids. His son is legit like six foot six. Damn. He towers. Tall. Denis is six foot. He what? <laughs> and he towers over him. How old is he? I'm like, yo, cast him in some of your movies, bro. It's so funny. They they l- kind of look like him, too. <laughs> Why, why'd you give me that look? <laughs> Not the movies, man. You're talking about the wrong posters. Got this guy in the league. <laughs> Fair enough. I was, trying, I was thinking in my head of a good... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there weren't that many surprises for the Oscars. Um, besides me predicting Cruella winning for best costume. <laughs> Um, but other than that, it's a good call. It was an Oscars. It was an Oscars for the ages. Yeah, by far the most memorable. Kenneth Branagh goes up to accept his Oscar, and Ashley's like, "Is that the Harry Potter guy?" <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Do you guys think it is? It's um Lockhart. Uh, I remember he had the Defense Against the Dark Arts professor in yeah. the second one. How, how drunk was Nash? Yeah, he just doesn't know who kind of brought on us. <laughs> no, but how drunk was he last night, though? He wasn't. All right. Well, maybe he was. I don't know. I was, like I said. I'm pissed I missed the live. I wanted to come in. Yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> Didn't miss much. I tried. Dude, you've answered the phone while It was so fucking funny. <laughs> you are ridiculous. And you're like, oh, I'm Helene not driving. sold me out, man. I'm not driving. Helene is like, yes, you are. His <laughs> <laughs> own comment is like, Teddy just on... The Instagram live while driving with his pregnant wife in the car. <laughs> it was empty road, man. <laughs> there was no one on the road. That's why I answered. Okay, well, before you get yourself arrested, um, before we get to the next topic on today's episode, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today's video, and that would be Storyblocks. Now, you can click the link in our description box below to check out how Storyblocks is helping creators keep up with the growing demands of modern video content. Storyblocks makes it easier for independent creators to bring their stories to life without sacrificing your video due to time, budget, or resources. With one of their affordable subscriptions, you will receive unlimited downloads for all of the content in the Storyblocks library, which includes templates for softwares like After Effects or all the major Adobe products. There's templates for everything. They also have stock images as well as graphic designs, background footage, royalty-free music, and so much more. It's a massive library. In fact, everything in the Storyblocks library is royalty-free, and yours to use as many times as you like, because that's the main goal of Storyblocks, making it easier for creators to create. And once again, you can click the link in our description box below and choose a plan that works for you from a selection of flexible and affordable subscriptions so that you can focus all your energy on creating without limits. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Um, U.S. weekend box office. It was an interesting weekend. Uh, number one was The Lost City. So that's the movie with Channing Tatum, Sandra Bullock, Brad Pitt. It's supposed to be sort of a romantic comedy. That made $31 million. So solid opening. The Batman, still cruising, came in at number two with $20.5 million for a domestic total of 30, $331 million and worldwide total of $672 million. Uh, number three was Triple R, which is a movie out of Bollywood. A three-hour action epic made $9 million in the U.S. over the weekend. Hmm. Number four was Uncharted, still making a shit ton of money. Well, not a shit ton, but overall it's made a shit ton. This weekend it only made That's $5 million, but solid, you know, some accumulation here yeah. over the last couple of weeks. So total for domestic is 133, and its worldwide total is 357 million. And Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie, came in at number five with another 4.5 million. It's made 27 million in the U.S. alone, and it's made 160 million worldwide. That's kind of where I want to start because I can't get over U.S. you know creatives not realizing how much money is to be made for animation on the big screen. Animation that doesn't cost as much as some of these Pixar movies yeah. or CGI animation. Hand-drawn, 2D. We always see anime. Like with Demon Slayer last year it was the, made a shit ton Massive. of money. Even I think it made like 450 worldwide. During COVID. Like, That's I think Ant-Man numbers. My Hero did pretty well at the box office, especially overseas in Japan, but was tons of fans here that go out in droves to see these films. Marissa, which I saw, which was hilarious, actually saw the, the dub, so... That sucks. I know. Yeah. What a rookie mistake that is. I would be so pissed in the theater. <laughs> hey, gang. 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, uh, Teddy would be like, all right. <laughs> you switch the tickets. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I guess this is the first weekend Batman got... Uh, yeah, I think this is the first time it's gotten knocked off. It only took Sandra Bullock, Brad Pitt, and Chris, uh, Channing Tatum to do it. Hey, so. It's like the uh, Warriors adding Durant. I'm surprised all this movie was going to flop, but I guess that's what happened. That's why you include the Brad Pitt bit in your uh, in your trailers just to get people out to the theater. So Isn't it streaming as well? I have no idea. I could have thought that this was streaming as well. But, yeah, no, uh, it's gotten solid reviews. How about Shiny um, Tanner? He disappeared for a while. Comes back hot with Dog in this movie. Yeah, I don't know if that's come, coming back hot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, based on the box office. Dog he, he, Did you see it? No, I didn't see the dog he probably, movie. He, I, that, he falls in love with the dog. It becomes his own. They make it to the funeral. Right, but he, the dog he dies, asked right? for a date movie. First of all, whenever you say you're going to the movies, you're not going to the movies. Uh, I tried getting there. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me for a day movie, and I told him to go see Dog. I'm not going to see it, though. Yeah, but do you know how it ends? That was my big question. I didn't want to go the, to a no dog way movie that dog dies. and yeah, watch no, the dog dog's not You die. can't have the dog's... owner die. That and then dog, the dog comes die. into the movie with problems. Yeah. Okay. He's got, like, uh, she's well, got some well, PTSD. So right, but Marley, they, they set it up that you think it's going to be this happy, family-friendly, they have a dog movie. It's not. Owen Wilson should have got should have gotten... Blacklisted from Hollywood. Why Owen that. Wilson? Why not the director? Because he took part in that. He knew what happened to the dog, and he took part in it. Will Smith kill, killed the dog in a movie. I am legend. Yeah, I cried in that too, but that was different stand, different uh, circumstances. Too. David, David Frankel. I hate killing dogs. Like even in video games, hey, I'll tell when you they what. attack you, it's like oh yeah, breaks yeah. my heart. Breaks my heart. I was uh, playing. What, what what was it? We played the, the game. The, Tilu, yeah, yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> I was playing Elden Ring on Ashes, and there's like a wolf attack. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to kill it. <laughs> Will Smith did give himself some nice promotion for I Am Legend 2. Well, Will Smith... I think that... Well, we've talked enough about that. <laughs> um, box Office, Lost City, yeah, that that's a bit of a surprise. But I guess it's cool to see a movie like that. I guess it's not coming out on streaming, uh, being released right in now. theaters and... Doing so well, yeah, it definitely has that going for it. <laughs> that there's not really that much to see. Batman's been out for what, like a month now? Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah, closing in on that. Still strong. I mean, still going pretty strong. Yeah, we'll see where this ends up reaching. Um, like I said last week, I, I read some articles that it was projected to land between 800 and 900. Um, we'll see. I never know what's a lot for a movie anymore because how much she's budgets are and how much money these COVID movies make. Things. It's like so there's still a bit of a readjustment, especially in terms of like just judging what a movie should do. Because, you know, there's still areas that... Like, is might... half a billion a lot for the Batman? Or should it have been more? Well, 672 on a $200 million budget, you're making a profit. So, er, er, anything they make more is going to be a profit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? If you could just... Uh, Dune... I, uh, Dune definitely did not make a profit. It depends what but the HBO Max probably, numbers were, I guess. Right. But it was probably close enough where it's like, okay, we'll go in for round two here. It's more of a... I think it was getting two regardless, whether it made money or not. No way. You don't think so? If it would have flopped, no. <laughs> All the more reason for number two, get redemption. You got investors to answer to, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> you got shareholders and shit. What about the viewers? Yeah. We wanted to see number two. Yeah, customer's always right, right? I hate that motto. Customers are wrong most of the time. That's why they're customers. Right. I think it's more so feed them whatever bullshit they want, more so than that they're just always correct. That's why I like the that, the clip was going around. I don't know why it was, but it was with Riley Cooper. I forget what movie, the name of the movie, but like when he's a chef and he goes out and he like the guy's being mean to the waitress and he kicks him out. We need more of stuff like that. Get the customer out? Yeah. You ain't right in this restaurant. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next story here. We have Marvel is planning to introduce a we're cosmic right now. superhero. What do you say? I said we're drowning right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, need Will, we need more Will Smith talk, man. Oh, yeah, with these stories? <laughs> yeah, no, these are going to be quick two stories. Uh, so Nova is a hero that they've been teasing for a long time. He's essentially, he, he's not the Green Lantern, but he's basically Green Lantern for the Marvel Universe. He's obviously part of the Nova, Nova Corps that protects, uh, protects Xandar. So we were introduced to them in Guardians 1. And like I said, this is a character that they've teased. Is he going to be in Guardians 2? Is he going to be in Guardians 3? Well, the rumors are now that he is going to have his introduction um, and that it's going to be a series on Disney+. I don't hate it. Are they ever going to bring Adam Warlock? 
Yeah, yeah, they casted him. Remember, I know, they casted like, uh, Will Poulter. Oh yeah, that's right. He's going to be in Guardians Three. So I was actually watching Guardians Stop Two. Stop banging the table, then. And banging the table. You're, you're moving it. I've been I watching am. Guardians Two over Lighter the past taps. week, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm barely touching half of this. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, they're doing that in Guardians Three. Oh, nice. Yeah, Will Poulter. Yeah, Nova. I mean, not, I'm not too familiar with the character, but I think that's a good idea. Kind of, you know. Delving. Well, they're saying that he's also going to be in Captain Marvel and Secret Invasion. Uh-huh. So he's just going to be all over the place. Yeah. Little side character supporting role and then give him his own own story. That's not it's a bad idea. well for them. I mean, they haven't really delved into the cosmic verse in their TV shows yet, right? So I think that's a good way to kind of uh, dip your toe into that. Loki, I guess, kind of. I don't kinda. even know what Loki... Loki pretty much was. That was pretty cosmic. Not really cosmic, more just exists outside of time yeah I don't know is that, isn't that what cosmic is I think it's like space I'll give it cosmic <laughs> I'm not giving it cosmic okay How many, were they ever in space deciding vote yeah were they in space yeah when when they w- yeah they were on those planets you're always in space <sighs> you don't have to be traveling through space for it to be cosmic I think so you need a spaceship I think scene. cosmic is yeah, a spaceship right. scene yeah anything outside of earth is cosmic they were in a space train can you agree? Co- uh, Anything outside of Earth is cosmic? Yeah, no, I agree. I, yeah, I give it cosmic. Okay. Give it cosmic. I'm glad <laughs> we wasted two minutes on that. <laughs> but uh, it's been decided. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he's been a character that's been teased for a long time. And uh, comic book fans really like him. You know, so people who are familiar with the character and familiar with the Marvel Universe, they're always like, where's Nova? Nova deserves to be here. Nova plays a big part in this story. What the hell? He so looks they're, pretty cool. They're like finally is get there their casting? live action Nova. No, there's no casting. Okay. Like I said, it, it's still not confirmed what it's going to be, whether it's going to be a series or a movie. But Disney, I mean, the MCU, they really are uh, planting their flag with these television shows. So the story is now moving from big screen to small screen, back to the big screen, back to the small screen. It's interesting. It's it's so crazy to think about. It. And all these TV shows collide with the, mo- the movies, too. It's so crazy what they're doing. Well, we're going to see the first big example of that with Doctor Strange, right? Because yeah, the events yeah. of WandaVision are being directly referenced. We haven't seen that yet, so we'll see how well Loki's it works. Too, right? Yeah, there were the rumors for a long time that Loki was... I mean, those what happened in Loki is obviously going to... We're going to see that in other movies yeah. eventually. But more, I guess you're saying more intertwined together is going to be Wanda yeah, and yeah, Doctor no, Strange. Yeah, no, but I think you're also right with Loki that I, I don't know which project we're going to see the Loki stuff yeah. in. I mean, um, so far at Phase 4, the shows have been the driving force. Yeah, they really have. This is Doctor Strange would be the first, because Spider-Man really does at this point exist in his own little spider world. But Doctor Strange is, I think things will change, you know. Things change for Spider-Man, for Spider-Man's story, but Doctor Strange is about to, you know, there's going to be, and more. we need to put the Avengers back together, and right. Shang-Chi's got those rings. What the hell do they do? How, do, how does that factor in? Did Shang-Chi win anything? Sh- Shang-Chi? Is it, it's Shang Shing, right? Shang. Yeah, it is Shang. Did it win anything? No. Was it nominated? Nominated for visual effect. Visual effects. Oh. All right, let's move on to the next story. The last story we have: the Batman releases a deleted scene with Barry Cogan's Joker. It's so funny existing on film Twitter in that bubble because everyone's like Barry Cogan, he's in every movie, and I'm like, hey, so and so, you hear Barry Cogan's playing Joker, and they're like, who the fuck is <laughs> Barry yeah, Cogan? I'm one, of, I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, say, I didn't say that he's in every movie. Not no, that no, one. you're saying yeah, that you have guy. no idea who the yeah. fuck he is. He looks so, fucking good, man. Uh, he looks on, on the internet, on film Twitter, it's this this guy just plays the same character in every movie. Uh, no one else knows who he is. Found out you got your wish, too. What? You, he's bleached. You yeah, you want him? to take that back? <laughs> he's <laughs> grotesque. Um, <laughs> God, he is. So, yeah, Barry Cogan. You remember him from the Green Knight, casual movie fan? I don't hate the Joker. I just, like, I don't like this scene. I don't think it's a very good scene, but it's a cool like. Sounds like you hate the Joker. It's a cool yeah. like look <laughs> into like <laughs> complete opposite. I'm of glad what you it was cut from the movie, and like it's cool to view through the lens of like oh a deleted scene and get right. to see more of this character. Uh, the look, I'm torn on. I kind of do like a lot of aspects of it, but like I think he's too deformed and gross. Like how is he convincing Harley Quinn to get him out of Arkham? Well, Harley Quinn doesn't have to exist in this world, and he got to pick a side too. Is it going to be he fell into a thing of chemical? <laughs> You I know, him, but like you want him to come out looking like Bradley Cooper. Yeah, right. In the cartoon, he comes Joker. out looking clean. 
you know, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's a little big mouth, but everything else is kind of smoothed out. You just wanted, right, a couple of scars, bleached yeah. skin. Not even scars, just a large mouth. I guess right, you can't yeah, really do a that. A little deformed, but yeah. you just more so wanted the bleached skin instead of the makeup. Yeah. He gave you, no, but we're, it's like we're boiling going all still. the way. It looks like he, they he just, just pulled him out. No, yeah. he fell into a bat of chemicals. But like serious bat, chemicals. Is it a bat or a bat? I was bat. thinking maybe a little, maybe, bat, right? maybe a little yeah. oxyclean, you know, bleach. <laughs> he drank it maybe? He fell in like toxic sludge in Chernobyl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, He's going he bald. Got... The Joker always has that fresh air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the backstory with the Joker is the uh, Batman, because uh, Batman 89, he falls in because Batman like spooks him into the chemical. Yeah. Jack so Napier. Is, so is that what it is? Is that like the story on how the Joker falls into chemical. It's always like that. Like he's involved with like some, like uh, some like mob crew, and yeah. they always, they always end up at the the chemical plant, and he okay. falls in. And, <laughs> it's, and it's because <laughs> of Batman. Pretty much, I think Batman shows up, gives him a little scare. Yeah. There, there's yeah, yeah. so many different origins. I, I some, do sometimes like I don't that. even get into it. It's he's just the Joker, but. Well, I love his origin in '89 because it really does. It still fits in with that. Jack Nicholson's, uh, you know speaks for itself but this character I mean the writing here it didn't fit the movie so I can see why they cut it 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 seemed like it was just something fun for them to do Mm -hmm. I'm such a sucker for these two characters though so to hear Joker profile Batman as well as he did I I loved it for him to put together the whole conspiracy in a matter of seconds where you know he he could tell oh this is something he's been working on his whole life and uh, you know and he's able to deduce the problems not only that Riddler has with Batman but also with Bruce Wayne Mm -hmm. without even knowing that Batman is Bruce Wayne because he says you know he can be inspired by you or maybe he has a grudge to pick with you so he deduces the two identities but to Joker it doesn't matter you know because he's just Batman he's just having the time of his life with him you know the voice the laugh it felt like him being a I was gonna say it sounded like Heath but I don't mind you know if you're gonna take inspiration from the goat because yeah. a lot of people have taken inspiration from Mark Hamill, and they've done incredible Jokers but in some of those animated movies. I prefer that more though. animated Joker, though. Not like the like obviously the animated version of the Joker I like, but like just in personality, more charismatic. Wise. Yeah, dude. They somebody made this point that Dark Knight Joker's funny. He's trolling yeah, he everyone. When Gamble says, "You think you could steal from us and walk away?" Yeah. I don't think he's like, uh, he's like he's not oozing charisma. A lot of the Joker adaptations that are the most people like, he's just like cocky. He's cocky. He's jumping around. He's doing some jokes. He's slinging. He jokes. jumps around. <laughs> he does the on the the guy he's, who gets shot when he tries to unmask oh, yeah, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's he's still the king. Uh, I I understand people saying that they're just fucking tired of seeing these two go at it. But not. But I would want to see. You can never get tired Batman of a face good... a Joker. Like as much as like oh another Joker, another Joker, another Joker. It's like I don't care who the Joker is. I want to see Batman fight him. Uh, right, you can't get you can't get enough of a good iteration of Joker and Batman. Well, if if they're going to feature him in the Arkham series as a reoccurring character, where he's he's really the glue here, or he's one of the main pieces of what's going on in Arkham, and then that leads to an appearance in one of the films, that could be great. I, I don't know if they want to stretch that character that thin, but we have three live action Jokers already. Why not put him on TV? That is a great marketing tool that you can use for your HBO show if it's an Arkham series, where if Batman and Joker are going to have these. It's kind of selective appearances here and there. But Joker may be a more prominent role. But you can't, you know, Matt Reeves is such an incredible director and he's becoming one of my favorites that I, I really want to see what he does with the Joker in front of the camera, not hidden behind a glass, you know, trying to keep him mysterious and creepy. You know, what type of Joker is this man going to be when he's off the leash? Mm-hmm. That's when you prove, you know, who your Joker is and can he stand up to some of the better ones. Um, but this was... For me, it was it was cool to see. No, definitely. Um, I, Pattinson. The more I see him, he's so Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he, you mentioned it that Batman never wins in these conversations. He's always losing in the police station to the Joker, man. <laughs> he, he can't get a win in the police station. I thought this was the smartest he's been with Joker <laughs> in a scene in a long time. You can't give him too much, man. You got to be in and out. You That's another thing I can't stand. Like obviously it's gotta be in and out yeah once you start playing his games <laughs> obviously you're gonna over- lose every time obviously yeah. there's an oversight but people like zooming in super like oh the he paper left, the, clip. left the paper clip Batman's stupid he oh, gave Joker the paper clip they ain't wrong though 
<laughs> uh, yeah, you better watch out. Yeah, that, yeah he's going to be out <laughs> next movie. With the... <laughs> this is a deleted scene. Please, can we stop doing know, this? Right. Well, now it's... I don't even think it was a deleted scene. I think they made this just to put it out later. Because, I don't know, I saw the, I saw the caption. Uh, what was that word that they, they kept mispronouncing in the movie? Radalada? Yeah. There was a website that you can go to at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was part of that. It was just for that. Yeah, I think when they filmed this that they had an idea in their head that this may not be used for the movie. Yeah. But it's something we can have, and it could be. It's a nice promotional material, mm-hmm. you know. It's, these it's an get, interesting idea, like having the Joker be like the Hannibal Lecter, trying to help Batman with the serial killer. But yeah, I'm, I'm that would have been kind of crazy though to see that, like in the movie theater, because that would have taken place. You would assume beginning of the second act, maybe. Right. Yeah, that's relatively early because he's got the those Wait, no, no, notes. He's, no, he says the mayor's dead. He says the who else does he mention that's dead? Is it the DA? I'm not sure. So then after the funeral scene, maybe the movie always just starts once the once the guys get caught. It feels like the movie's just starting. Yeah, it was a good scene though. Um, nothing crazy, you know. People, of course, had their and you know their takes either way. Greatest yeah. Joker ever, greatest Joker since Heath, worst Joker ever. If Snyder did this, everyone would have hated it. Every Joker is simultaneously the, Joker the worst Joker and best Joker. You can find anyone. You can find any take you want. I guess. All right, let's move on to uh, fan questions. That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do sitting there arguing and you're trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not just show. It's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. This first one here from Nick D at the Film RX. Which project are you more excited to see? Robert Eggers' The Northman or Ari Aster's Disappointment Boulevard? Hmm. These two are like uh, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson of horror. They seem to be dropping movies at, on the same years. And people love comparing the two of them. Uh, (laughs) Disappointment Boulevard sounds like it's going to be insane. Not a disappointment. Uh, It's an American comedy horror film. uh, And the synopsis is described as an intimate, decade-spanning portrait of one of the most successful entrepreneurs of all time. Bezos? Joaquin Phoenix is the lead. (laughs) Nathan Lane is in it. Amy Ryan. Stephen McKinley Henderson. So it's got some good actors. And, of course, The Northman has been on all of our minds. I think, you know, the, I think The Northman. Yeah, I guess because I've seen what The Northman is, is about. Yeah. And everything I've heard about it. The fight on the volcano. Um, Willem Dafoe acting like a madman. Skarsgård being sexy and animalistic. Dafoe's in this? my alley. Dafoe's in this? <laughs> um, the Dafoe? I don't know. I Like you said, they're, they're two just... they. Uh, their past run has just been incredible. So anytime they have a new movie coming out, I'm excited. But I, I think I like Aster. It's tough. The Lighthouse is so fucking good. I'm gonna go with the Northman. I feel like it's just more my style in terms of. Bro, and like, like you said, we've sick. seen like we have some kind of vague idea of what it's gonna be about. Disappointment Boulevard is very much. Um, have any like stills or anything even came out or any other news or surrounding it? No, mostly... um, It's under wraps, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. no, it's under wraps, right? And we haven't seen much of it, uh, much of anything from it. I can't wait for Men from Alex Garland. That looks fucking creepy. And Jesse Buckley, talk talk about just like a rising star. Obviously, she got nominated for the the Oscar, but if if this movie's good, like her past three movies being that performance in The Lost Daughter... um, Men and um, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, I'm thinking of ending things. Like that's quite a fucking run. What are you looking up, Ted? I'm looking up pictures of both movies, and the Northman looks like it's gonna be nuts. <laughs> uh, this question here from Good Queen Alyssa. Question for Aaron. Gun to your head. What's your favorite song on Evermore? Gun to my head. I don't know. I'll look at the track list. Doesn't even know the tracks. I know the tracks. Just want a little refresher. Oh, big time Swifty over here. It's almost um, like he pretends to be a Swifty on the podcast. You just say the first one has a star on it. Yeah, right. The I've, first. I've, <laughs> I've listened to the album, so I know. Yeah. 
I mean, of course, several year. times, right? <laughs> Own it on vinyl. <laughs> Not on vinyl, just Apple Music. Right. I have it downloaded. You switch to Spotify. I really like. I like, I like folklore much better, but Evermore actually I do like. Um, Champagne Problems is pretty good. Oh my god! What? Just glance at the track list. Now you're trying to act like you're pulling them from the back <laughs> of your mind. I just want a little refresher. I didn't really like Evermore too much, so I didn't really like to hone in on it. So. Yeah, but what I'm saying is you can't fool us. We just saw you look at the track list. I said I was going to look yeah, at the track you, list. Yeah, but the way you put your phone away and then you started. Put your phone away like you were trying to hide that you were looking <laughs> at your phone. We already saw you on your phone. How am I going to hide when I literally said I'm going to look up the track list? I know, but that's why it was weird that you put it away and then you started talking. What, that, all I needed was a quick glance. Be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> quick little refresher. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, this question here from Isaac. I guess this is for all of us. From Isaac Brisson, 19. Rank your rooting interests for your for- favorite sports teams. For example, I'm Yankees, Celtics, okay. Colts, Bruins. Whoa. Yankees, Colts, <laughs> what? Yankees, Yankees, Celtics, Colts, Bruins. It's interesting. The Patriots are right there for you. Yeah, right. Just fucking root for the from, I know. Sally is from Boston, right? Because he has two Boston teams. Yeah, he's got Celtics two Boston teams, but he's a Yankees fan. Not a big hockey guy, but I'm going to go... Football's my favorite sport, but I love the Yankees more than the Patriots. So I'm going to go Yankees, Patriots, Knicks, and I'm not that big into hockey, but I like the Rangers. Yeah, mine would be Knicks, Yankees, Giants, I guess Islanders. <laughs> I've gone to more I think I've gone to more Rangers games, so that's why I'm saying the Rangers. Then what? Islanders. Oh. Um, I almost had the perfect four, because that's a perfect yeah. New York four. If I would just, but I can't because my dad was an Islanders fan, so I just can't. I feel like it would disrespect his legacy. One hundred percent, you have to be an Islanders <laughs> fan. Yeah. My parents don't watch hockey, so well, he was a big Islanders fan. He liked all sports. Well, your parents are big tennis people. Yeah, well, how do you know that? Because they've been to your house m- multiple times where your parents are just watching tennis. My mom's obsessed with tennis. Oh yeah, yeah. I think uh, my mom invited her to go to a U.S. Open one year. She never got back to her. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> I think it did. <laughs> did it? Yeah. I'm embarrassed. Uh, Our um, moms have a similar friendship to us. <laughs> just talk about, talk about doing things and then yeah. just do our own thing. <laughs> they should start a podcast. For me, it's Jets, Islanders, Yankees, Knicks. But Jets, Islanders, Yankees, Yankees Knicks. Knicks. In that order. I feel bad would for you. you prefer, <laughs> would depressing. you prefer a game more than rooting? Like, is there a game? Like, would you rather go to a Knicks game or a Yankee game over a Jet game? I, I, football games are the worst sporting event to go to live. They are. It's terrible, especially because every other game is going on at the same time. Football at home is so much better. I'll go to maybe one game a year, and I'm like, eh, and I'm iffy on that one. I love being at a baseball game. Baseball and hockey are my – actually, basketball hockey, is a lot of fun to go to. But Hockey's a good time, too. When, when, when your team's winning and you're rooting for them, it's fucking electric. Yeah, I think hockey is probably the best live sport. If you get, like, good seats, playoff atmosphere is just fucking insane. Baseball more for like different reasons. I'd rather go to a basketball game to be like into a game and like watch like incredible feats of athleticism up close. Baseball is more just like you make a day out of it. Yeah, I'll be You're honest. Just lounging baseball, yeah. in the good weather and drinking beer, eating hot dogs. I tell you what, I'd probably watch less. Like I don't watch much of the game when you're at a baseball game because you're just chilling. Yeah, you know, you're watching, but you're like half watching. Have you guys ever been to a good basketball game? I haven't. I've been to like maybe ten basketball games and. They were all blowouts. I never actually got to witness an electric stadium at basketball. You actually, actually not. You you just went to one, didn't you? That was a good game. I've been to terrible basketball games this year, but I was at that game too for the Knicks Hawks. The Nuggets game so was sucked, fun. Huh? Yeah, that was the beginning of the Nuggets going on a nice little run for their team, and the beginning of the end for the Knicks. <laughs> So it was nice to be there. No, I, I've been. I went to four Nick games this year because I anticipated them being a playoff contender. Yeah, so, so invested in this season. Um, but <laughs> that's where it gets you, man. The second you get invested, listen. The Knicks need some stability, so I'm glad we're bringing back Thibodeau. But fire Thibodeau. I've been to some like weird. <laughs> weird he just won Coach of the Year. I love how everyone's calling for his job. <laughs> I've probably been to more baseball games, but like all over the country too. I saw Gary Sheffield's 500 home run. That's weird. I saw Jeter's 3,000 hit. <laughs> I'm imagining you as a grandfather. <laughs> Grandpa, what's your favorite it's sporting moment? like the moment? most least insignificant 500 home run of any player ever. <laughs> Come here, son. I'm going to tell you a great story. I saw A-Rod's 498th. 
but then it was retroactive because of a rain delay makeup, so it could have potentially been his 500th. <laughs> I remember he dragged that out forever. That was in Kansas City. All huh. right, this question here from uh, Supreme at Via Superb. What bad movie or series would you like to see rebooted with a better director mm. and script? Yo, you know what Nash had the audacity to ask me last night? And by no means, you know my opinion on this film. I do like it a lot, but I don't hold it in the same regard as much people. But he's like, is like The Godfather like just like, is it really good? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Nash. It's like, oh, no, like, I just don't think it doesn't look good. I just don't think it's good. I'm like, what, is, what has made you not think that movie is good? Everyone saying it's the best movie of all time? It's like, oh, I just don't think it's good. Like, you've never seen The Godfather? He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, is it like Goodfellas? I'm like, just, just watch the movie and get back to me. I just felt like I had to share that with you. I think Nash would actually really like The Godfather. I yeah. think it's, it's kind of up his alley. If you told me Nash had never seen The Godfather, I probably wouldn't believe you. I would have thought, I would have pegged him for he, the way seeing he's, that. The way he just brought up, I was like, is The Godfather like, really just that good? Well, it's so talked about as the best movie of all time, all the time, you know? So I think a lot of people will naturally feel a bit skeptical when you keep telling somebody that something's good for a long ass time. But uh, in terms of like series that I would want rebooted or movies, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some of the like the fantasy series that we've gotten. The Witcher. I don't know if that necessarily needs a reboot because a lot of people have enjoyed season one and season two. Um, but I mean. Jesus, it would be the Star Wars prequels. That's the one that I would want to redo because I still maintain that those... I mean, at this point, it's it's it would make people go fucking crazy if you made, remade those prequels. It'd be like we were living in the fucking Twilight Zone. It would never happen, Especially right? if Disney did it. It won't happen, right? <laughs> I, I never say never when it comes to fucking Disney. When that Star, War, Star Wars well is running dry in 15, 20 years, guess what we're doing? Yeah. And then everyone who grew up with the prequels is going to be mad, and then all the young people are going to not know what that even means. I'm going to say, yo, Star Wars sucks. Just what what it's become. <laughs> yeah, it's just... <laughs> there's really just, like, two really good movies, and that's it. I think that there are some, like, young adult adaptations that probably could have been better. Like, when you had that, you know, there were so many young adult movies being produced, and they all kind of stunk. Maybe that's just based on the source material. What was the ones God. they were doing with the running Maze Runner? Yeah, oh, uh, Maze Runner. Season 8, Game well, of Thrones. Well, doing Percy Jackson. Well, that's the big one, right? Yeah. They're doing Percy Jackson, a new adaptation. If you can redo The Hobbit and, like, just make it one movie, but I would want Peter Jackson to come back. Maybe that, but I don't think there's any need for that. Well, Avatar The Last Airbender for the movie, without a doubt. And now mm -hmm. Netflix is doing the live-action series. But people have had their problems with that because the original creators were supposed to come back. Then they left. Then there's this talk about how the budget's going to be $15, 20000000 million per episode, $200 million for two seasons. And everyone's saying, hey, why don't you just do an animated show? Because people are going to be more interested in that after the success of Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix. It was huge during the mm -hmm. pandemic. Imagine if you... I watched it. <laughs> yeah, if you just said, hey, there's going to be a new animated Avatar series. Do that. That's just so much easier than doing some live-action bullshit. That's a cash grab. That's not going to be made out of love. That's probably going to be a disaster. So that's going to be my pick, because I know that one's going to suck. I thought the uh, creators backed out of the new one. Yeah, they did. The, the new live-action one. Yeah. And they also backed out of the but movie. But they're still doing made. it. Are they really? No, yeah, Netflix I thought is got, still doing I it. I thought it got shut down because they left. No, no, no. It's full steam ahead. No. Oh. Good. <laughs> history, history really does repeat, uh, repeat itself. Uh, this question here from Sammy Namer. What audiobook would you recommend? The you Shining guys, uh, was actually really good on audiobook. It's the only one I don't listen to. So I didn't recommend The Shining also. <laughs> actually, like, if you were doing like a... I, I did a... Uh, I've done Game of Thrones audiobooks when I used to go back and forth to school. Um, those are nice because I feel like... They're actually presented very well, and it's just like a, I wouldn't say it's like a fun listen, but it's just a, it's something that, like, kept me interested the whole way, and I th thought it was really presented well over audiobook, and you kind of just, you know, phase in and out and kind of pay attention while you're driving, and I think that's a good one. Like, a nice long book that might be a little bit difficult to sit down and sit there and read and really get through. You just listen to it, pop it on, and go about your day. The first half of Dune is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I would recommend Black leopard red wolf because it's similar to game of thrones where it's a massive book um 
and the story is complicated. There are a lot of different subplots. It jumps around, but the narrator does a great job keeping you invested, and I, I think it works better as an audio book than it does as just sitting down and reading it. Actually, so I'd recommend that. It's actually, a great fantasy story. Yeah. I actually did The Hobbit an audio book a while back. That was pretty good. I really fumbled my uh, New Year's resolution. What was it again? Well, that's the book I recommended to you, too. I said, read yeah. Black Leopard, Red Wolf. I didn't even get off the ground with that. You're like, oh, I need a long Is that like the Red Eyes Black book. Dragon? <laughs> no. <laughs> the author uh, sold it initially as African Game of Thrones. Mm. That's pretty cool. And, and then he was like, I apologize to all the readers who read it after I said that, because it's not really African Game of Thrones. <laughs> It's similar. The author it's, said that? It's dark <laughs> fantasy, but it, it's not told from all these different perspectives. It's one perspective, but uh, many different subplots, like I said. So that would be my recommendation. That's like us putting on this. Uh, you know what's a great one, too? And I know he's got a... Sorry to cut you off, Teddy. He's you know ha- been in the news for all the wrong reasons, but Call Me By Your Name, narrated by Army Hammer. Mm-hmm. That is That was a fantastic listen. He was an incredible narrator. Yeah, this was like a nice voice, but... Um, this question oh, here yeah, I from about that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Posniak. This will be second to last uh, question. What video games are you currently playing, thinking of playing next? I started Elden Ring. I stopped. And I still have this kick with uh, Call of Duty. I can't shake. I'm trying. I'm, I'm limiting myself to Call of Duty. I'm trying to break the habit. I was playing too much. No, that's ruined your New Year's resolution. Yeah, it has. Your gaming habits. Yep, it has. Um, you're a sick man. Sick, sick man. Thank you for finishing that. Uh, uh, relax, because you play fucking 2K 24-7, and... I haven't played 2K, 2K in 2K? years. Oh. <laughs> I love how you just don't know things about your friends. <laughs> you're like, you're, you... That's all you right? play is 2K, though, when you do play. I will be the show. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. I okay. didn't mean 2K. Right. What do I I'm play? You, you actually said you haven't been playing, right? You've been no. watching well, Naruto? I- I've been doing... Yeah, Naruto. I love the way you say that, Naruto. Um, I think you'd like Naruto. I love Naruto. Oh, okay. I played Elden Ring at Nash's. I'm like, okay, I'm sure it's good, but I'm not going to sit down and That was a problem. I got into it, and I knew that it was going to be like a, like, consume my life if I really, if I really did want to get into it. Dude, you guys should play. I think you would I both like Mass miles. Effect. I think Aaron would like it more. More plot-driven. Yeah. Epic story. That's the, the game you said. Cosmic. That's the game you said that has like re- repercussions, right? Yeah. Or, like, when you make a pick and... Yeah, it's cool because Mass Effect is like something in the game that allows you for space travel, but, you know, it's a play on... A lot of times I play games with cutscenes. I like to play a little and put my feet up for... for yeah, that's what Mass Effect is good for. It's got good cutscenes. Yeah. Was there a movie I'll like watch. that on Netflix? Or yeah, and Bandit Yeah, I'll watch a video game uh, cutscene movie. movie on YouTube. You know how they have those on YouTube? Or just all the cutscenes? I'll watch that every day of the week. Yeah, I like doing that too. I did have Mortal Kombat like two nights ago, actually. <laughs> All right, final question here from Brian at Rad Myself. <laughs> Best cliffhanger in a movie. Exclude Marvel movies. Oh. Okay. Well, Empire Strikes Back, great cliffhanger, obviously, mm-hmm. leaving that on fucking Darth Vader being Luke's father. I don't know how they survived for those three or two summers. <laughs> um, I always liked the Pirates of the Caribbean 2 cliffhanger, Johnny Depp being eaten by the Kraken. That was fun talking to fans. You know, what's going to happen? How is he going to come back? Oh, you know what was a good one? Uh, when Hank found out Walter was uh, Heisman, I uh, he's on the toilet, wait, bro. The Heisman, <laughs> what, uh, what Walt the fuck's the Heisman? Name? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, Heisenberg, Heisenberg. That's what I said. You get to watch Better Call Saul, I almost did. Man, start it, dude. <laughs> they did one of those montages where it was a second from every episode, it made me want to go back and watch it. Um, I uh, cliffhanger, what? No, oh, yeah, that was a good cliffhanger. It's all right. When, no, that, when that's Wolf a good found clip. out that yeah, he was good cliffhanger. Obviously, kidding? John Snow being killed. But those are just movies. You know, right. TV? Well, Teddy oh, brought no. it to TV, so I figured I'd. I, I thought the question TV's was any got cliffhanger. Better ones. It's because with movies, it's always going to be the blockbusters. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be the franchises. So you know, I'm trying to think of the big movies that have come out that have that have ended on. But I think a lot of my favorite movies that go into part twos and threes, like even Lord of the Rings, I don't even call that like a cliffhanger. Right. They're more of just events that happen and they kind of like, you know, the last five, ten minutes are kind of regathering themselves and there's a sense of like kind of with doing too. They kind of regather themselves and they push forward and, you know, what's gonna happen in the next movie, but it's not like a single event. It's like, oh shit, I can't believe that happened. What's gonna be the outcome of this one singular thing? Um What's the worst clip? Like, movies that try to set up sequels. 
that are just terrible. Yeah, I'm trying to think of unresolved <laughs> cliffhangers. Lead of Battle Angel, I, don't, I remember watching that. There was a like very, very apparent like sequel setup, and, and no news on that. Yeah, we bring it up all the time, but Sinestro and Green Lantern is mm. is definitely a funny one. Hey, I mean, even the Mummy, right? The Mummy was supposed to jumpstart this whole monster universe with the Invisible Man and uh, Mister Jekyll, Doctor Jekyll, and Mister Hyde, and all these other fucking characters, and then that nothing. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the Nerd Soup Podcast for today. Thank you for listening, and share it, like it, comment your thoughts on all the topics we talked about, and, yeah, we'll see you next week. What do you... No. What? I thought you were looking up something to... I was, looking up, I was looking up cliffhangers. Twin Pictures on it. I mean, the show is a cliffhanger. That actually is a great cliffhanger at the end of that season, too. The whole show is a cliffhanger. Any. Right. Well, season two was a 27-year cliffhanger. That's what it said. It said. I don't know how people waited a 27-year cliffhanger. <laughs> but, but I'm glad, because after, after all that time, we finally got the answers we were waiting for. <laughs> was it what you waited for? Was it good? Damn. We were making some good points in that video. Hey, guys. Aaron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout-out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.